Hello, and welcome to this fall's first edition of Nittany Watch. I'm Shana McLaren. And I'm Mitchell Carson. Nittany Watch is our student-produced digital magazine show, bringing you news, sports, and information from Penn State Harrisburg and the surrounding region. During each program, we will present an in-depth look at the people, places, and events that make Penn State Harrisburg and the Susquehanna Valley a great place to call home. On today's show, we'll take a look at the fall schedule for the Kalkarni Theater. We'll also bring you up to date on some of the events in the region. And Kylie Altlin and Matt Wiest, our new sports team, will join us for their sports report. Before we head into the show, I want to let everyone know that we here at Nittany Watch and our sister publication, the Blue and White Journal, have already been hard at work. We have published the first fall edition of the Blue and White Journal for the first week of school, and you can find it in newsstands around campus. This edition introduces you to the Penn State Harrisburg campus and includes some QR codes that may come in handy. You'll also find news stories and updates on the PSH student media website. That website is pshblueandwhitejournal.com. Now to our show. Mitch, have you ever felt lost when roaming around the campus or just confused about where a certain area is? Well, Shana, I have to tell you, there are times where I get, you know, turned around, especially at the start of a new semester with classes in, in, in different buildings. Well, no need to worry. Reporter Matthew Wincoop and I decided to take you and our viewing audience on a virtual tour around the Penn State Harrisburg campus. Have you ever wondered where everything is located on campus? Incoming and new students may feel confused or lost as they are roaming around. No need to worry though. I, Matthew Wincoop, and Shannon McLaren will take you on a virtual tour around the entire Penn State Harrisburg campus. First, we will start at the Olmsted Building. Are you new on campus and not sure where to go? Well, this is the Olmsted Building, the building that hosts different important areas on campus such as Stacks, Biscottis, and is the home to most of the main classrooms on campus. When you enter the main doors to the Olmsted Building, you immediately enter the Olmsted Lobby. To the immediate right is Biscottis and Stacks, the main dining area on campus. Stacks is a great place for students to relax or work on classwork, while also enjoying some of the food. Stacks is open daily at varying hours depending on staffing. The first hallway to the left is where you will find several office suites. The Gallery Lounge, which is used for several bigger group events, and the Oliver Legrone Center are also located in this area. The Oliver Legrone Center is where students can go to study and work on assignments for classes. Going up the stairs to the second floor is where the majority of the classrooms are, with either a W, C, or E preceding the room number. The second floor also has a nice study area for students to do classwork. Up one more floor to the third floor, more classrooms can be found along with professors' offices. The basement is where the communications office is located. All communications professors have their offices on this floor and can be reached here. Anyone who needs to check out a camera, microphone, or any other type of technology will come to this floor. Now, in regards to the letters preceding room numbers, in the Olmsted building. Here's Shannon McLaren with more information. Now I've had a lot of students ask me, where can I find my classrooms in Olmsted? That's pretty easy. Each classroom is marked by a letter and a number. The letter says which area of Olmsted it is. So if you're coming in the main doors of Olmsted, C is going to be straight in front of you, West is going to be to your left, and East is going to be to your right, W and E. The number shows on what floor it is. So the number closest to the letter, that's going to be the floor. So for example, west so for example, classroom W215, west side of the second floor. That's all for the Olmsted building. Now Shana McLaren will walk you through the Madeline L. Haynes Library. Behind me is the Madeline L. Haynes Library. There are multiple study areas for people to, to utilize as well as computers, and there are also a variety of different items that you can borrow. The Madeline L. Haynes Library is a perfect place to study, with a variety of desks and computers available on its three floors. Study rooms are available to rent for up to three hours a day through the library website and have a variety of features like whiteboards, televisions, and computers. The library hosts special collections in notable areas like the Linda Schwab Holocaust Reading Room that can be accessed either on your own or via an appointment with a librarian. Despite initial appearances, Research materials and casual reading books aren't the only things you can check out from the library. 
On the first floor, students can find a selection of DVDs, CDs, audiobooks, vinyls, and board and card games available to borrow. For certain classes, textbooks are available to rent out for a couple of hours. The library also has cameras, laptops, presenters, and other electronic equipment for students to use. Borrowing times vary, so it's important to check with the circulation desk for more information. Search the entire library but can't find something you need? Students have access to materials from any library in the Penn State system at no extra charge. You can request an item from the catalog at libraries.psu.edu to be delivered to the Harrisburg Library. To the left of the library is the Student Enrichment Center, known simply as the SEC. Shana goes more in-depth of what the SEC provides. This is the Student Enrichment Center, also known as the SEC. There's a ton of student resources you can find here, such as Disability Services, Advising, and Career Center, as well as other important locations like the bookstore, outposts, and provisions. One of the most recognizable areas of the SEC is the massive campus living room. Multiple couches are available, and there are game tables where students can play foosball, air hockey, and pool. There are also TVs where some students play video games in the afternoons. The Kolkarni Theater is in this area as well, showcasing multiple cultural events throughout the semester. Down the ramp from the Kolkarni Theater is the campus bookstore. This is where students purchase textbooks and supplies for their classes, as well as various Penn State apparel and merchandise. The SEC is also home to the other main dining areas on campus. The outpost is located just off the campus living room and serves a variety of breakfast and lunch food. The outpost also serves pastries and Starbucks drinks, similar to Biscotti's. Around the corner from the outpost is Provisions, the campus convenience store. Provisions has a limited selection of food, snacks, and other essentials, as well as Penn State Creamery and Bakery Essentials. Upstairs, students have access to a number of academic resources. One of the most notable is the Learning Center, where students can make an appointment through Starfish to receive tutoring in a variety of different subjects. Advising is located around the corner, opposite the elevators, while CAPS and Disability Services are located across from Advising and just past the elevators. Students with disabilities are highly encouraged to visit and speak to Alan Babcock or Lauren Weber to discuss accommodations. On the other end of the hallway is the Kunkel Career Center. Students can make an appointment through Nittany Lion Careers to speak with a career counselor about resumes, interviews, finding a job or internship, or other career-related concerns. Further behind the SEC is the Capitol Union Building, or the CUB. Behind me is the Capitol Union Building, also known as the CUB. In the CUB, you can find several recreational and sports facilities, such as the weight room, the gymnasium, and the pool. It is important to note that upon entering the CUB, you will need to swipe your student ID card and tell the receptionist where you are headed. From the side entrance, the first area immediately to the left is the weight room where students can go to work out. The first floor is where the gymnasium is found. Several sports are played here, and students can use the gym for recreational purposes as well. Beside the gym is the aquatic center, which is where the swimming pool is located. There are also several other classrooms and labs in this building, particularly the kinesiology lab. When you're ready to leave, no need to check out at one of the desks. You can simply exit whenever you wish. The other two main buildings, on campus are the Educational Activities Building and the Science and Technology Building. These buildings mostly house classrooms and offices. The Science and Technology Building is home to several kinesiology labs as well. The EAB has three large classrooms upon walking in that can fill a larger class. Other than that, there's not much more to these buildings. The Sotera Building is available to anyone who's seeking assistance with financial aid. The parking office is in the white building beside the Sotera building, which is where required parking passes can be purchased every semester. The exterior of campus also has some popular spots. The Vartan Plaza is decorated right in front of Olmsted. The Ziegler Commons area is also toward the right of Olmsted, outside the automatic sliding doors, which lead directly into stacks. Hill Island is a relaxing area at the rear of Olmsted. A Nittany Lion statue can be found near the library, a great place to pose for pictures or sit and relax with friends. A globe fountain in front of SEC holds the same use for anyone on campus. 
The fountain is an interesting item to look at as you walk from class to class. That concludes this virtual tour of Canvas. Any further questions regarding where to go can be answered by anyone. Just be sure to ask. You have all the help you need to succeed. Who knew there was so much to do on campus? I know, right? Another point, don't be afraid to ask anyone within the Penn State Harrisburg community for your help if you still find yourself to be unsure of where different things are at. I'll certainly be sure to do so. We'll be right back with more Nittany Watch after this message. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome back. This semester, our Cole Carney Theater is putting on another series of incredible shows, and our theater department is also getting in on the action, presenting a Shakespeare classic for this season. Mitch, are you looking forward to it? Absolutely. Let's hear more about our theater's fall season with the story from reporter Dora Kong. The Cole Carney Theater, established in 2016, is keeping up with another semester of active humanities and art education presenting shows from the Kokarni Cultural Series and the School of Humanities. The series' mission is to bring to the campus a high level of professional, national, and international arts. And the series also works hard to have a diversity component. Every student on campus is welcome to join the events held in the Kokarni Theater. I was a student here, and um, being part of the theater um, made my experience on campus Phenomenal. I mean, they they tell you to engage when you're on campus, um, when you're staying here for either two years or all four years, um, and coming to events, either participating in them or just attending them, can really make your experience here um, really wholesome. For the Kokarni Cultural Series, the first upcoming event is a flamenco dance show. Passion e Arte, and they will be highlighting the, the beauty and passion of flamenco dance, which has its roots in Spanish and Hispanic culture. Following by a radio show, It's a Wonderful Life, and the Campbell Brothers Gospel Music event. For the fall season show from the School of Humanities, a midnight summer stream is going to be held from November the 2nd to November the 5th. It is featuring student performers, um, directed and produced by faculty and staff. Um, we also have student staff that help build the sets, um, run a lot of the technical aspects of the show. The theater is here for a better campus experience and for students to express their talents. And we can also get to see how they present their work behind the veil. Tradition is, it's called a green room, but as you can see, it's, it's not green. <laughs> but it's a place where people can rest and prepare um, and we have it decorated, obviously, for Penn State Harrisburg. And we've also had many of our speakers and artists uh, sign their posters and flyers. You can see over here, these are all the artists that have come from international places to perform on our stage. And we get them to autograph the flyers and posters, and we think it makes for very nice artwork. Plus, it tells our story. You know, this is really the kind of work we've done. Every year it's something new, there's something fresh. Um, it's not like we bring a lot of the same things back, but we also have a lot of new things every single year. So it's always fun to, it's exciting to work for a theater. I can't wait to see a Midsummer Night's Dream. For more information, please visit the Cole Carney Theater's official website, harrisburg.psu.edu slash theater. Well, the leaves are starting to change color and fall is in the air. Yeah, I'm ready to enjoy some cooler weather. It's been way too hot recently. Very true. But luckily the area tends to have a lot of interesting fall events. For example, did you see the Middletown Home event last weekend? The Middletown Home? Uh, isn't that uh, right up the street from campus? Yep. On the 17th and 18th, they got to host their annual Pumpkin Fest. Visitors were able to go on a hayride, visit goats and miniature horses in a petting zoo, watch pumpkins get tossed, explore the craft fair, enjoy live music, and a lot more. Are there any other interesting fall things going on in the area? Of course. 
Hershey Park has recently brought new offerings to its Halloween season. Oh, I heard about that. They added some haunted house and stuff, right? That's right. There are four haunted houses available with a separate ticket and three less scary scare zones, which are included with park admission. Aside from that, a lot of their regular Halloween activities are still available, like certain coasters operating with the lights out. Oh, and we can't forget about fall events going on on campus. That's right, you're right. Penn State Harrisburg's Fall Fest will be held over Common Hour on Thursday, October 13th. Expect food, live music, and lots of giveaways all down Vartan Plaza. Wednesday, October 12th at 8 p.m. is the massive bonfire in the Berg. A giant bonfire will be lit in the green space next to Olmsted with food and music. And, and the Sunday after that, October 16th at 1 p.m., Thon will host pumpkin carving and painting with local Four Diamond families in the Morrison Gallery in the library. One of our recent events mixed fun with support for a serious cause. The Counseling and Psychological Services hosted an event that's to celebrate World Suicide Prevention Day. This event was at the Ziegler Commons area. Reporter Matthew Winkoop walks us through the event. To commemorate World Suicide Prevention Day, the Counseling and Psychological Services known as CAPS, hosted a painting event with the aim of raising awareness. It was held on Friday, September 9th, one day before World Suicide Prevention Day, which is celebrated yearly on September 10th. The focus of the event was to raise awareness of suicide prevention. In order to do that, CAPS hosted the painting event where anyone in the Penn State Harrisburg community could come and create artwork and express themselves freely through art. Each student had their own canvas where they were then able to create art that was meaningful to them while also raising awareness at the same time. While most participants individually created their art, a group of students decided to combine their canvases to create one big piece of art. This signifies what the day is about, the community coming together for the same cause and raising awareness of an important subject such as suicide prevention. Eileen Haas, the Director of Counseling and Disability Services, and also the Director of the Student Disability Resources, gave a brief explanation of what Su World Suicide Prevention Day is. She was accompanied by Nahed Khalil, who helped to run the event. Suicide prevention is observed every September 10th um, globally, so they're recognizing those who have died by suicide and just kind of raising awareness about suicide prevention. Um, because too many are being lost to suicide. And so it's something to kind of recognize and raise awareness, make sure that people are reaching out for mental health um, and also knowing some of the signs and what to look out for and take care of others, um, just to make sure that we keep everybody. Haas, Khalil, and the rest of the crew helped provide a safe place for participants to express themselves. The office is decorated with the artwork created during this event. There are numerous ways for people to seek help if they're feeling depressed or having thoughts of suicide. The Penn State hotline can be reached at 877-229-6400 or by texting LIONS in all caps to 741-741. This hotline is available 24-7. Urgent or crisis situations should be directed to 911. The Student Disability Office is located in the Student Enrichment Center, Suite 205 on the second floor. Students can come visit here at any point and make an appointment to speak with one of the staff members. For Penn State Harrisburg Student Media, I am Matthew Wincoop. That was really important information that everyone in the Penn State Harrisburg community should be aware of. Be sure to watch out for any future events that CAPS may be hosting. We'll be right back with Kylie Altlands and Matt Weiss Sports Report. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. 
Hi, I'm Kylie Altland. And I'm Matt Weiss. We'll be working together to bring you the best in Penn State Harrisburg sports. Take it away, Kylie. Thanks, Matt. The Penn State Harrisburg volleyball team hosted their second try match of the season this past weekend. On Saturday, September 17th, the Lions fell to Rutgers Camden in the first three sets. However, they bounced back quickly to earn themselves a four set victory over Wilkes University. Senior Anna Ruff contributed to the match with 14 kills, while juniors Tanira Tubo and Tori Henderson also contributed, each with double digit kills. Olivia Koikaba dug out 20 balls, while Hannah de Gregory tallied 36 assists. The Lions will play in five more matches before their first conference game against Penn State Berks on October 8th. Now on to cross country. The men's and women's cross country teams competed in the Charger Invitational at Lancaster Bible College on Friday, September 16th. The men finished second out of seven teams. Both Sam Bishop and John Carnesi finished in the top 10. Luke Culver finished 12th and Stephen Painter and Nick Spohn also completed the race for the Lions. On the women's side, Abigail Marquette finished 20th with a time of 32.54. Madison Parks finished right behind her. Desiree Amaya finished 23rd and Leah Gray came in 38th. The blue and white will race again on Saturday, September 24th at the Penn State Abington Invitational. Now on to men's soccer. The men's soccer team hosted their first conference opponent, Penn State Abington, on Saturday, September 17th. The Penn State Harrisburg Lions secured the win with a 3-1 victory over their fellow branch campus. Mark Rogers started the scoring early in the match, scoring a beautiful penalty kick in the 11th minute. Nearly four minutes after Rogers put the Penn State Harrisburg Lions on the board, Luke Myers scored what would be credited as the game-winning goal, off an assist from Daniel Fombu. Penn State Abington was not phased by the score as they were able to get past the Penn State Harrisburg Lions defense to make the score 2-1. It wasn't until the second half that the Lions of Penn State Harrisburg got an insurance goal from Daniel Fombu in the 85th minute to secure their first conference win. The Lions played at Penn State College on Tuesday, September 20th and walked away with a tie of 1-1, making their overall record for the 2022 season 3-2-3. The Penn State Harrisburg Lions will travel to Alfred State on Saturday, September 24th. After this message, Matt will be back with a look at women's soccer, tennis, and golf. Welcome back to the show. Penn State Harrisburg's women's soccer continued their winning ways as the Nittany Lions defeated the Hood Blazers for their second consecutive victory. Reporter Matthew Wincoop reports on the game. Penn State Harrisburg women's soccer continued their winning ways in a home matchup against the Hood Blazers. The Nittany Lions won the game 3-1 and the game was played on Saturday, September 10th. Led by head coach Brandon West, the Nittany Lions were the first to score with Sidney Hemler beating the Blazers goalie to put Penn State Harrisburg on the board. Hood tied the game at one thanks to a goal from Sarah Frensley. This is all they would get, however, as the Nittany Lions held their own the rest of the way. Penn State Harrisburg's Kylie Alland and Isabel Tony sealed the win with goals of their own to put them on top 3-1. to one. Goalie Sydney Malka made her lone save as the Lions triumphed over the Blazers. The game featured a few notables. Altman's goal was her team leading second of the season. This marked the fourth game winning goal of her career. Hemler and Tony's goals were their first of the fall. The Nittany Lions celebrated their victory with a post game tailgate. Here, the players were provided with free food and refreshing drinks after a hot day. Forward Abigail Frew 
provided her thoughts on how she believes the game went. I think the game went really well today. Um, I think that we're finally starting to connect on the goals and stuff. Um, we're really starting to work as a team, getting our chemistry down. Um, and our response to the first goal was really well. I think that we are really connecting and I'm really excited for our in-conference games. For Penn State Harrisburg Student Media, I am Matthew Wincoop. The Nittany Lions also won their final game of the homestead against Albright with a narrow 1-0 lead. Kyla Brostead scored a late goal to give Penn State Harrisburg the lead. Additionally, the Blue and White have since defeated Penn State, Abington, and Penn College 6-0 and 5-0, winning five consecutive games. Their overall record stands at 5-1-2 on the season with a 3-0-2 home record. They've played eight games and have scored 20 total goals as a team. The women's tennis team began their 2022 season at home Saturday, September 17th against Susquehanna University. The Lions started their season off incredibly strong, outperforming Susquehanna with a result of 9-0. The Lions swept in doubles as well as singles. As for the men's tennis team, they also walked away with a 6-3 victory over Susquehanna. The Lions took over during doubles matches, winning all three. They won three out of the six singles. Both the men's and women's tennis teams are hosting York College at home Saturday, September 24th. And now on to golf. The golf team opened their 2022 campaign on Wednesday for the Elizabethtown Fall Invitational. They finished tied sixth among other local schools. Some of the top performers in the tournament include Josh Africa, who shot eight above par, which had him finish tied for 14th place overall out of 70 total golfers. The men's team would then take the greens just a few days later at the Mountain Valley Collegiate Classic. During Friday's action, senior leader Josh Africa scored a hole in one. This helped him secure a three-way tie for first place during the first half of the tournament on Friday. Junior Matthew Redman was the individual champion of the weekend. Redman shot just four above par to capture his individual trophy. As a squad, they finished with a share of fifth place out of the 13 teams by the end of the tournament. Hey Matt, I'm back. Oh, hey Kylie. Did you know that intramural sports have been in full swing since the beginning of the semester? I actually had no idea. Well, they started off with ultimate frisbee. Mitchell Carson has the fly on their season. The intramural sports season at Penn State Harrisburg kicked off with ultimate frisbee. The ultimate frisbee teams were flying high this season and the students were enjoying themselves competing against the other teams and fighting for the win. Two students from two of the teams shared their experience of the season. So we have high hopes. We just want to make it to playoffs. We don't know if we're going to win. That's okay. Um, our team's kind of carried by Taylor Hartman. A lot of good throws. Um, she's captain material. Uh, we wouldn't be where we were without her, and yeah, we're hoping for a good season. We just lost a good game to a good team, but you know, the king has to fall sometimes. Uh, we don't have any positions on our team. We just do man-to-man -man coverage, and what we hope to accomplish by the end of the season is just to play well and uh, go as far as we can. The final game was on September 14th, and the Hucked on a Feeling team were crowned the champions for the ultimate Frisbee season. Team captain for Hucked on a Feeling, Ryan Kempster, was excited about the win. Um, for being team captain, it was pretty fun. Um, honestly, there wasn't too many duties. It was just getting the team together in the first place. Um, but I mean, when we're out here, we're playing as a team. We're all playing together. So, I mean, that's really what it's about. Like, yeah, like, yes, I'm kind of, like, me and another friend, like, we actually did play a bit ago. It's like we kind of like coaching each other along, like telling everyone like, you know, make sure passes, you know, whatnot, keep it all together. But really it's like a team effort. So I didn't really do too much to be honest, but yeah. The head of intramural sports at Penn State Harrisburg, Daniel Barlett, was excited about the turnout at Ultimate Frisbee and is excited for the rest of the Ultimate season as well and hopes students join in. Yeah, we're looking for as many people who want to come out and support our cause. Uh, fan base is always welcome, as well as participants. And if you want to sign up, you go to imleagues.com and you sign up for an account. It's a free account here, and all the students are welcome to join. And we're just looking forward to having everybody out for camaraderie purposes and to really make this the best experience possible. Mitchell Carson, Penn State Harrisburg, Student Media. 
Thank you, Mitchell. Congratulations, Hooked on a Feeling, on being the champions for the intramural ultimate frisbee season. Other intramural sports are getting set to play. Intramural soccer has begun. Other intramural sports for the fall are flag football, bowling, and dodgeball. The registration for the three intramural sports are up and running. Students can register by going to the website imleagues.com. That's all for this edition of our sports report. Tune in every month as we dive into all of Penn State Harrisburg sports. To keep up to date with Penn State Athletics, visit the PSH Athletics site to stay connected using the handle at PSHBGAthletics on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Kylie and Matt. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. You can watch our show on the Penn State Harrisburg Student Media YouTube channel or check out our link on the Penn State Harrisburg Student Media website, pshblueandwhitejournal.com. For all of us here at Nittany Watch and WPSH-TV, thank you for watching.